I'm here with Tony Hardman, co-director and producer of the new documentary Semper Fi, Always Faithful. Excellent film. Everyone should see this. I'm here at a preview in San Francisco. So Tony, why don't you give us a synopsis of this film? So Semper Fi, Always Faithful is the story of Jerry Ensminger. He's a retired Marine, 25 years of service, uh, dedicated Marine. Unfortunately, his daughter gets diagnosed with childhood leukemia at the age of seven and passes away at the age of nine. For about a decade, he was haunted by his daughter's death, wanted to know why she died. He had no history of leukemia in the family. Ultimately, he stumbles upon what might be one of the largest water contaminations in U.S. history, and that occurred at Camp Lejeune Marine Base over a period of about 30 years. Uh, approximately 1 million people might have been exposed to these carcinogens. It was uh, TCE and PCE. PCE is a uh, potential human carcinogen, and TCE was just recently declared a known carcinogen. How did you find out about this story? We were researching another story, my co-director and I, Rachel Liebert, and uh, that story looked like it wasn't going to come to fruition, uh, but the woman who was the press agent for that particular organization mentioned she had a brother. He may have uncovered something. Uh, he was fighting the Department of Defense, and she wanted us to look in and check in on her brother and see if uh, he had a story that might have some weight to it. Were you familiar at all with these issues before you took on this project? Uh, Rachel and I were not activists. We weren't environmentalists. We are documentarians. Uh, possibly now we're a little more active. We have actually environmental working group and uh, Blue Green Alliance and Safer, Safer Chemicals Healthy Families on board as our uh, environmental partners. Um, so, yes, before we started, we were just storytellers, but we've learned a lot and we uncovered a lot of information. We were shocked to find that the Department of Defense is the largest polluter in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, uh, following Jerry around, we found out a lot of things that we really didn't want to know. Well, and a lot of things Jerry didn't want to know or didn't think were possible because he was such a faithful Marine. And in the film, he said, I never thought that I would be treated like this. I never thought that they would withhold this information. Yeah, there's a huge sense of betrayal on Jerry's part. Uh, you know, he was loyal to the core, and uh, he still has this, he's consumed by the sense of betrayal. Mm. And uh, he's a fighter. You, you know, the Marines trained him to be a fighter, and now he's turned it on them, and he wants ultimately some kind of uh, apology from the Marine Corps. Well, what, what's really struck me is his, his per perseverance, because so many people in communities who've been affected, who live near bases, said, look, you're taking on a, a powerful government here. You can't win. And Jerry says, we have to keep fighting. Yes. Uh, anyone will tell you that you don't want to take on the federal government. You are going to lose, and it's going to cost you a lot of money. Right. Um, he has no choice. He's going to do it to his dying day. Um, he's made some progress. Uh, he's got friends within the halls of Congress, both in the House and the Senate. He has helped get legislation uh, introduced, and hopefully, ultimately, this, this legislation will be passed. It was also very um, hard to watch people testify about their tragedies, their personal tragedies, whether it's men with breast cancer or women who lost their children. Uh, just hours after they were born. And it was also amazing that Jerry and a couple, well, one other man, they went on a mission to basically inform people who lived at Camp Lejeune. And the military said they couldn't, they didn't have the resources to contact all of these people. So these guys did it. Yeah, basically Mike Partain, who was a male breast cancer victim, mm -hmm. uh, he was conceived at the base. Uh, and Jerry Ensminger have basically been on this quest to inform, notify the victims who might have been exposed at Camp Lejeune Marine Base. And uh, they've made it their duty. They have their own website, The Few, The Proud, The Forgotten. Um, and if you might have lived at the base between 57 and 87, you can go to their website, uh, register with them. You can also go to the, uh, there's a, a, a website that's uh, 
collecting a database for people who are exposed, and uh, they help link you up with that database. And in your film, one of the facts is that one in ten Americans live within ten miles of a toxic military base. And I understand you're adding a feature to your website, SemperFiAlwaysFaithful.com, that'll give people more information about this. Right. You can go to the website, uh, SemperFiAlwaysFaithful.com, and uh, ultimately you'll be able to plug in your zip code and find out which contaminated areas uh, might be near you or possibly where you might have lived. And uh, yeah. what it, just you know, going through this whole process, we were talking earlier about homeless veterans, about rape in the military, about this. What what does this reveal to you about you know, how these veterans are treated and how, how could this change? I mean, the government pretty much has the power to change this, and they're not doing it. You know, uh, as one of the uh, spokespeople, one of the generals says in the movie, they consider themselves war fighters. And, uh, you know, people are going to fall by the wayside. People are going to get hurt. People are going to get killed. It's, uh, that's what they do for a living. So I, I can't speak for the military, but I think that possibly they, that they feel that's part of the cost of doing business. Mm. So. And in terms of a theatrical release, mm -hmm. uh, you're thinking in March? In March, we will have a, a broadcaster. It'll be a cable station, a uh, basic cable station. I can't mention who because we're still in negotiations. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be released on DVD and educational. There will be an educational release as well. Uh, it'll be digital, digitally released as well. Um, and it will be on DVD. And what response have you received from veterans and current members of the military? I understand that you screened this near Camp Lejeune in North Carolina. We screened uh, about a month ago at Jacksonville, North Carolina, and we had about 10,000 people who were exposed, affected victims uh, who were there between the periods uh, 57 and 87. Um, a lot of them had a lot of suffering, a lot of experience, a lot of tragedy, and didn't really know what it was. And then they see the movie, and there's this aha moment. And the thing we learned is they want to know what to do now. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to know how to get health care for their families. Um, they've had, they've lost children yeah. over the decades, and they've just suffered in silence and alone. And uh, now they're starting to build their own community. Because a lot of these people do not have health care. Um, a lot of them are poor, right. underserved and uh, they do not have health care. Can you give us the name of the bill that is currently in the House and the Senate that would provide them with health care? There is a uh, bill in the House. It is, I believe it's H.R. 1742. That is the Janie Ensminger Act. Uh, it's named after Jerry Ensminger's daughter who died of leukemia. Um, it would give health care to the, uh, the Marines, retired Marines and their dependents. Um, there is a companion bill in the Senate introduced by Richard Burr and Kay Hagan, Senators. Um, that is S-277, and that's the Caring for Camp Lejeune Veterans Act. If you go to the website, there's a Take Action button, and you can get information on how you can communicate with your senators and congresspeople. It's amazing that you actually have to communicate on an issue like this. Yep. Why hasn't, have, haven't these bills passed? Uh, basically, it's about money and funding. Uh. There is the Tea Party is kind of involved, and they don't want to fund anything unless you can figure out a way to fund it. Uh, and uh, on the Senate side, the, the Democrats aren't in, are hesitant to be involved, and on the House side, the Republicans are hesitant to be involved. So, hopefully, within the next session, we can get these bills out of committee and uh, voted on and get the health care that these people need. It's really such a shame. Yeah. Tony Hardman is co-director and producer of Semper Fi, Always Faithful, and you can find more information about all of this information under this video. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank you.